Hi, everyone. I'm Murphy New from Google. It's an honor to speak on behalf of our TensorFlow quantum team and introduce you to an open source library for quantum machine learning. Before I start uh, sharing with you the awesomeness of TFQ, let's go down the memory lane of how much I wish I had TFQ. Three years ago, as a board grad student in physics from MIT, I came to Google for the summer internship. Sergio and Vadim gave me a very hard quantum control problem of finding the analog control waveform for realizing any two qubit gate well facing realistic imperfections, such as leakage and control uncertainties. So conventional control optimization methods failed um, pretty bad. So I saw there's no reason not to try machine learning well at Google, but it wasn't easy at first. After struggling with various incompatibility issues and get stuck for a numerable time, I also have to write my own quantum simulator and hyperparameter optimization. So that experience was exhausting. And when I returned to Google for another summer, I decided to avoid machine learning software and just instead write a custom network and optimizer um, just with common tensor algebra of Python for my next project. The same summer, Masu came up to me and asked, what if I give you a platform to generate and interface quantum data with classical machine learning infrastructures seemingly seamlessly? I answered, hell yes, well, when can I use it? Uh, Masu said, wait for it. Uh, so next year, I joined Google full time and I'm still waiting. But Michael Brighton is giving us hope that we will get there soon. And fast forward to March 2020, TensorFlow Quantum is launched. So now it takes a physicist, uh, just one software, TensorFlow Quantum, to do machine learning research with and for quantum systems. With this unified platform, we can process both classical and quantum data and using both classical and quantum uh, machine learning architectures. So what do we mean by quantum data? One kind of quantum data presents in the fast developing quantum communication networks. For example, the longest quantum key distribution transmits information carried by a single photon across the continent between Austria and China through a satellite relay. Another kind of quantum data is obtained through various quantum sensing methods, ranging from NMR, NV Center to Redbird atoms, and many more for quantum imaging and realizing optical memories. Lastly, we also have measurement and calibration results obtained in a quantum computer. For example, the superconducting one at Google, it is super cool. Also, we have analog waveforms sent in through microwave cables that Marisa and others carefully arranged to control our quantum computers. These diverse kinds of quantum data can be fed into equally diverse machine learning architectures to extract useful information and make predictions. I listed some examples of classical and quantum uh, machine learning architectures here, which I won't have time to go into detail. But the takeaway is this diverse data and machine learning architectures can now be united under one framework, TensorFlow Quantum. It is a software framework for hybrid quantum classical machine learning under TensorFlow and CERC. We aim at enabling fast prototyping training, inference, and testing of quantum models for quantum data to eventually facilitate and the discovery of new quantum algorithm for NIST device and error-corrected quantum computers. So what is the secret behind TFQ that allows such a unification? Fundamentally speaking, quantum circuits are no more than tensors, just like classical neural network. So if we can seamlessly convert quantum circuits to tensors, that are compatible with TensorFlow data structure and convert quantum measurement outcomes to tensor contractions of measurement operators also specified by tensors, or so-called ops. Then quantum data and quantum machine learning architecture become part of an overall computational graph and easily integrable with classical machine learning agents. So with this big picture in mind, here is a more detailed look at the software stack. At the top is the humongous amount of data we needed for machine learning. It can be classical or quantum data prepared by a quantum circuit. 
The data are fed into the machine learning architecture, including both traditional TensorFlow layers and the new quantum layer provided by TFQ through Keras models. The output specified by the tensor operators are passed down to the hardware backend, uh, be it TPU, CPU, uh, or QPU through TensorFlow, CERC, or QSIM simulator. Depending on whether one requires simulation of the quantum uh, measurement or execution of the quantum circuit in the lab. So now let's see if I travel back to the past, what I would have done with TFQ for my reinforcement learning project. So no more struggling with software compatibility issue or writing your own quantum simulators. Moreover, with the choice of a QPU, you can optimize quantum circuit in real time. Now you might be eager to see how TFQ works in action. Let me give you a taste of it with real quantum computers from Google for learning one wave noise for device. One wave noise is notoriously prevalent uh, among solid state qubits. Uh, it manifests as a slow drifting term in, uh, error in the qubit frequency uh, parameterized by this Hamiltonian, where F represents the amplitude of the one wave noise. E represents a specific kind. So the problem I want to learn is defined as follow. Uh, given a state prepared in the X basis, I evolve it under a Z Hamiltonian H naught for a certain amount of time and perform me uh, the measurement of the X basis, uh, X expectation values. So this is usually called the Ramsey experiment. And given this experiment result uh, measured for different uh, amount of time up to T, I like to predict the measurement for the future time step. So a successful prediction of this time sequential data will also means a correct inference of the 1F noise parameters. It seems to be a simple problem, but it's difficult due to the weak amplitude uh, and the long-term dynamics of the 1F noise. So now it's time to use the magic of machine learning. Recurrent neural network is particularly designed to represent the time sequential data efficiently. One of the most widely used recurrent neural network is called long-term short-term memory, which explicitly parameterized the balance act of prioritizing the long-term versus short-term memory. It's represented uh, in the lower right. Uh, it looks kind of complicated, but you don't have to worry about it. TFQ will take care. All you need to do is to call an innate TensorFlow function uh, colored in this yellow box. And we'll specify in size and certain uh, the hyperparameter and input size of the, uh, the recurrent neural network. And then uh, to train this LSTM to learn the time sequential structure of your experimental data, what's left is to define a cost function and to choose your optimizer. So you might be more ambitious. Um, instead of using a quantum simulator, you might want to swap in a real quantum computer. And this is also very simple. Just replace an expectation layer with sampled excitation. And don't forget to choose your best backend to be the amazing quantum engine, uh, which Dave Bacon will talk more about and probably give you some free quote quota if you ask. And specify the number of reputations of the measurement of each circuit. And bam, this is the fresh data taken from yesterday on our quantum engine, where the upper right is the training performance with blue curve part uh, as the input data to the LSTM and the orange part as the prediction. And the lower part of the figure is the testing result. So that summarized my lightning talk for TensorFlow Quantum. Although a meme is worth a thousand words, I hope that you will be convinced to try converting everything into tensors through TensorFlow Quantum and go out there to solve big problems and let us know how you like it. Finally, I'd like to thank the enthusiastic and hardworking TensorFlow Quantum team. Musu started the project back in 2018. We probably wouldn't have launched TensorFlow Quantum without Michael leading the engineering effort together with amazing help from the student researchers through multiple internship over the past uh, two years and Ellen's 
amazing effort on in deploying TFQ eventually as a TensorFlow product to share with the broader public. And it's still an ever improving open source library and that depends on contributors like you. So thank you for listening. For the next step, please go ahead to check out Masood's full length talk on TFQ as at TensorFlow Dev Summit and our TFQ website, which have many amazing videos and demo tutorials as well as uh, TensorFlow white paper. Um, and if you have any question, feel free to ask them at the Dory and I will give it back to Marisa. <laughs>